I leave photography. Photography is like water to me. So it's my responsibility to drink water. My name is Zanele Mholi. Zanele means the last born, and Mholi means leader. Who's art? We are the art, and everybody is an artist. We look for things that make sense to us to use in the photo shoot. And there's no formal studio. You just use that dry wood and then tear the panty horse and I pick the pine. And I like the aesthetic of the wood, those pieces of material, and how this nothingness is something to me. Personally, most of what I've captured has a lot to do with pain. It could either be from my own self-portraits in which I relate historical events and reenact them and use my own body to speak on injustices of this world. Because what does it mean to photograph yourself? You give yourself a voice. We come from spaces in which we never had names. Especially minority groups from poor backgrounds were silenced in different ways. And every day there is a racial uh, uh, attack happening somewhere in the world. We just want to encourage people to look at themselves and own themselves and speak without words and use this visual for their articulation. I'm a visual activist, pushing an agenda on issues of concern. The concept of Women Mopa Museum, it's aimed at breaking that silence and also to break the hierarchies that exist in art productions or where culture is shared. And just to give love to thyself, emphasize the need to remember who you are. I got a shot. My name is Andrea Philly Walls. I'm a poet, self-taught digital artist, and I'm learning photography with the Women's Mobile Museum. My style of visual art is about combing the public domain where people and bodies of color, in particular black bodies, have been disrespected and maligned. But what my work has been interested in is reclaiming those images, rebuilding them to tell a different story. This is a beginning for me as a photographer. So a new challenge is to figure out how to learn the technology so that I can create content to tell new stories. I feel like I'm in the middle of this conflict dealing with telling stories of trauma without traumatizing the audience. How do you do that? How do you transform a trauma into something that is useful? I don't tend to think in linear strokes. I tend to be pretty mosaic in my thinking, bringing in all the metaphors from my experience kind of simultaneously and sifting through them to try to find a crystallizing moment or purpose. What we're actually trying to do is bring portraits of people who are not usually presented in museums to places where people don't usually go to museums so that we can bring a sense of art that we see in our communities into communities that don't usually get thought of as artistic. Who art is for are people who need a witness or evidence that they exist. If everyone can take for granted that experience that any white person in Philadelphia going to the Barnes or Philadelphia Museum of Art feels where it's not even a question 
that you see yourself reflected. If we begin to normalize that experience, a lot of the other social justice work is already done. I'm a meme curator, veteran movie maker, respected rhyme slayer, no apologies. You can find me in the field advancing film ethnography. My name is Dave L. Barnes. I'm originally from York, PA. I went to the military, so I deployed to a couple places. Tried to settle back in Pittsburgh before I ended up here. Came to Philly for love and ended up trying to go to school. So we should roll. How many people do you have room for? This is a group effort here with the Women's Mobile Museum. We're shooting the people of Philadelphia and we're shooting the landscape. I know him, he's a veteran. I call myself a digital culture worker. All of my content is social justice oriented. I want to highlight women veterans of color and queer veterans of color. The most dangerous uh, thing you got shot. Zanelli Moholy has taught me to shoot outside my comfort zone. You know, sometimes it's not even about like shooting. Your existence can be danger. Learning how to curate a show with Renee Musar. That was an eye-opening day when she came and we went to do the site visit in Juniata. My name is Javier and I am the director here at the Boys and Girls Club. What's unique about the exhibits that we have is a lot of them aren't actual museums, so they don't have these long halls and white walls. We're going into a gym, a rec center. One thing that Renee taught us is how to use the space that's there. Um, this is Juniata Park. So if we put stuff on wood, wood is something that we can take down, take to the next place. If we go back to those trophy boxes, they're like a gift in this space. That's history. The people are represented, the neighborhood is represented. You've got all of these residues and tape and color. It's like people touching and concealing and revealing their achievements. I want to bring my full self into it. I'm a black queer veteran. I want to bring that story into the space to show love and strength and resiliency. And for my work to be a model of healing for veterans. Mi nombre es Edith Maldonado y soy de Fajardo, Puerto Rico. Vivo en el norte de Filadelfia y tengo mi familia, mis hijos. Yo soy madre, soy abuela. Yo encanta el arte. When I came to the project, I thought that I was going to come to just learn photography. That's it. But since I came to the World's Memorial Museum, I've been able to get in touch deeper with myself. At the beginning, I liked to, to do more scenery pictures. Now I like pictures of people that are engaging with others. It's something that interests my mind. It's really amazing how can a picture reflect what you're feeling. You can see a person's heart, a person's soul. I took this picture of myself just waking up. I connected that one with that poem that speaks about my courage to accept that I'm a better woman than I was a year ago. It's hard when you are starting to be an artist. There are parts of my life that I want to share and then I'm afraid of sharing them. Art is what moves our community. I think it's fascinating that through generations, people have been able to connect and pass down ideas and legacies of their values. In this case, I will use photography to express who we are and what we stand for. Wow. The love is there. Mm -hmm. The fold of the sheets, everything. It's kind of like making an arrow drawing you in towards that scene. It's just it's beautiful. I kind of like watching her doing her makeup, we were talking and having a conversation. Photography is helping you share new things together. Mm -hmm. You call it a real magical moment. Mm -hmm. Being part of this group of wonderful women and this amazing curriculum, it makes me feel empowered 
to create and be myself and calling myself an artist. It's challenging, but it's a wonderful journey that I will not change for anything. This project is about memory, the memory of a Black girl that grew up in West Philly and how that translates into Black memory as a whole. My name is Danielle Morris. I'm a self-taught street photographer. I like to focus on portraiture and I've recently gotten into cataloging and archiving myself. Yeah. It's like the essential for your identity. Absolutely. Yes. Like I'm trying to go back, like back to my past and relive like the most fond memories of my youth, like my old bedroom. Like, the Women's Moment Museum fun. was definitely my idea of how to push my career forward. I can take hundreds of pictures a week very easily, especially if I just go outside. I like lines, the shapes that things make abstractly. And Danny's about to start. Some of these are diptychs and triptychs. I don't have my clear narrative yet, but what I am trying to convey is that representation is important and that the way that people exist is beautiful. Because this is busy, the braids are what makes this image stronger. Having the crit has been more helpful than anything. I know now the technical things that I should be pushing forward in my images. The specific story that I want to tell, I feel like there's a beginning and an end to the images that are here. It's like these little things and the subtleties in these images are things that I think about all the time. I liked that those two went together, but then I didn't know what to do about the other two likes. Hey, this is Danny. She's a genius. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Question. Yes. What's the story behind this? This is my favorite piece. Most of this is about inheritance and not worldly possessions, but about everything that my family has gone through that has made me who I am today. The resilience, the strength, the love, the care, the guidance. Because y'all work is phenomenal. Thank you. It really is phenomenal. I love you so much. Representation in museums are not of people that look like me. I'm trying to produce the representation that we deserve. We exist and we're here. We are beautiful and we are art. The change that's going on in the city with gentrification, things can easily get lost, like stories of people who've been here their whole lifetime. My name is Taj Billington, and I'm a Philly native, born and raised. Philly native focuses on the portraits and the people as a way to say, I see you, we matter. To me, they're all looking at you with these open, honest expressions. Uh, it's about beauty and it's about resilience. Yeah, I definitely do. It's very much inspired by life experiences. And being from Philadelphia, I know that Philly natives have scars and also trauma. Just thinking about healing. She's a friend of mine. We go back to you know, high school. I'm definitely here to support her. We definitely want to support each other and build each other up. What is art to you? Art, art, art can be a lot of things. It's fashion, it's what you wear, it's how you wear, it. it's poetry, it's writing. Art is it's who we are as people. I think art is for whoever seek it. I do think it's a lot of inequality. You look at history, pyramids and all that. Who do you think that was for? Mm -hmm. People that had high influence and had a lot of money, they did things the way that they wanted to do it. It's up to us now to, to challenge that and be the one that, that's part of the change and part of forward thinking. So it's important for us to show up. It can be discouraging coming from not having a lot and trying to make a difference. I think it was very important me and Maholi from South Africa. And it's just very eye-opening, and it was 
a lot of thinking, a lot of process, and it's deeper than just the art. We try to help each other, we learn from each other. I do believe that change starts right where you at. Facing the challenges, the fears. You start here, then you can change the world. It's called Fundación Fuerte. It is a display and a tale that I am during still today. I'm facing a lot of loss. With these photos, I got to explore self-portraiture and channeling not only my emotions through this turmoil, but my family's emotions. My name is Muffy, I'm from Philly, and I'm a visual artist, a proud daughter, an educator, and a kid at heart. This past year, my family home was damaged by fire. In the process of renovating, a new construction from a neighboring site fell onto our home, leaving my family displaced. What is an artist? An artist is just simply expressing what they perceive whether it be the times, whether it be their lived experiences, or just like how they perceive the world, their paradigms. When you hear the question, who is art for, what do you think of? My nieces and nephews, uh, my neighbors. Whoever she did. When you started that, I thought of this whole thing in my head, and I guess I have to share it now. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought about this process of it sparking something within you. And then to become an artist is to share that light. It's like sharing a flame, like to light things on fire. This is the show. Even if it comes on here. Art is definitely vital for any community, and especially for communities of color, for that source of expression and celebration and way of survival. Let me tell like which one I like and why. Which one speaks to my heart? And I selected the one in the middle. It kind of speaks to the brokenness in our family. Not in our relationship, but in like our surrounding. But it also speaks of our strength. I suffer with lupus, and so like taking pictures every day is not a reality for me. It's not going to be a reality, but I'm trying to make it work. And this is what I have to show for it. Thank you. I know that the train will move. It's coming and I have to get on it. But the one thing that I can't predict are the people that I meet and the ones that I've built connections to. My name is Shasta Beatty. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm a photographer, a visual artist, aspiring scientist. I've always been uh, very interested in beginning and endings and finding myself really torn with um, letting go and or initiating. So I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I just knew that I needed to be in this space and I knew that this space would help me grow. I got into a really bad car accident. I lost my car, it was total. I wasn't able to walk. During that time, I felt like I lost all control. And I felt like when I used SEPTA, I had freedom. The majority of people that I was attracted to photographing, they had a certain level of calmness and physically, like they felt like they were comfortable in the space. I remember initially thinking about museums from childhood. Being in a museum is just not real you know, or not a place where I fit, or not really a place where I belong. It's a place where I'm not represented, that I need to figure out how can more people that look like me be in this space and what's really needed to happen. The sun was setting at night, and I was waiting to retake a shot. So the trains were coming back and forth and back and forth, and I saw him, 
and his skin looked like Hershey's chocolate. It was beautiful. He was sitting there joking with his friends and he lifted his chin up and the light from above hit his chin. And also his stature, like the way he had on the white shirt and the light. And I said, ah, moving that way. I think the thing I did want to show is the beauty in people. People who are resilient, committed, and that work hard just to also see their story as well. One of the biggest lessons I learned from Women's Mobile Museum was being fully present and doing the best you can with what you have at that time and space. Some things in life you have no control over and you have to make peace with that to really bring out the best of what's now. My name is Carrie Ann Shimborski, and I was born and raised in Philadelphia in the Wissanoming section. I've always considered myself an artist. As a child, I always loved to draw and paint, was always drawn to photographs, and there's not that many photographs of me because my mom just said she didn't have the time or the money. I was the fifth. So like, I think that's why I'm really drawn to photographs and to document the people I love because I haven't really been documented. All I ever wanted was training in photography. Right after high school, I was accepted into Kutztown and I was gonna be in the art program, but my financial aid at the very last minute didn't go through. And then I went to community college, dropped out, then stayed out of school for a couple years, went back, dropped out again. Always due to like financial reasons. Hey, Carrie. And so when I read this, it was the perfect opportunity to have mentors to help me. And I was paid so I wouldn't be losing money in order to follow a dream. How many images do you see? Okay, okay. so Danny. Yes. The two women. Yeah. The lady in the news. I always stand. ask the question, like, are you able to tell if the photographer knows the subject? If the photographer loves the subject, if you can see their connection. And that's what I would like to convey, that you can tell that this isn't a picture of a random person. Love is definitely a theme. Welcome to the Women's Mobile Museum. Hi, Raise your hand if you want an audio description. One, two, three. The Braille audio tour is on those tables. Actually, the kids, they made me realize how important your descriptions were. Here's the actual artist, and she's going to share with you about her photograph. Actual photographer. That's my son in that picture. And he's, how about how he's old? He's seven years old. Seven years old, and he has his arms up in the air, like embracing the yes. sun. You're here for a certain amount of time at 37. This is what made me feel good every day. I feel like that's so important, because this is your life, and these are the people you love, and this is the places that you like to go, because you matter. Okay, ready? All right, we say one, two, three. What I really wanted to show is just how black people feel. My name is Shayna Dina. I'm from West Philly. I'm a painter and photographer. I make abstract work and realistic work. I have always focused on light and darkness. It started with drawing before the Women's Mobile Museum. I deal with light and darkness when I drew with charcoal. Darkness represents oppressions and forms of attack. We are now in front of Shana's exhibit, Black Incandescence. This body of work is a visual reflection of our turmoil and resistance. It's a spotlight on him, but he's not choosing to be in the spotlight. It's not a lot of detail other than that one expression. I'm just trying to represent what we go through. There's fear, anger, tired. Sleep is an important aspect of this series of photographs. 
Rest should be a time of peace, but for many black people in America, the constant worry of the threat of tomorrow makes it impossible to feel at ease. Do you have a question? What does that mean, like, Black Lives Matter? I think it's in relation to how black people are currently being treated. Day-to-day -day harassment and oppression, being wrongfully locked up and attacked. I'm saying Black Lives Matter is just saying we want to be treated kindly like anybody else. Shana? Yeah. I really enjoy learning from other people. Before, I was just doing what I could by myself with supplies that I could get. My growth might have been stunted just working along. I'm really proud of all of us and we produce some amazing work and get the messages across that we want. I feel like now and I shouldn't doubt myself. And I can go after whatever I want to. I've always made art and I think I've always been an artist. I think art is for anyone who's willing to view it and appreciate it. I feel like a second class citizen in a lot of ways because I'm a woman, because my skin is dark, because I'm black, because I'm an immigrant, because I'm very visibly Muslim. My name is Afa. I identify as a daughter with grandmother tendencies, an activist, an artist, an educator, who's just trying to love the world until it loves me back. Because my series is about the Western gaze and the male gaze. It's about those who made me feel uncomfortable being seen, the times I felt that I wasn't seen. It's about erasure and representation. It's an investigation of what is othering me. So um, this is my wall. As you can see, it's very deeply personal. I started photography because I was in pain and I needed to document how I was feeling, what I needed to survive. I was raised by Philly, born in Sana, Yemen. My family and me are from Darfur. What we hope for when we think of the homes we want is a safety, comfortability, company. I'm still stuck on the first one, just trying to find safety. The stars are just as far from each other as they are from me. Some days this eases my lonely. Some days this feeds her. For people who've been displaced as much as I have, to just be told that this is a place that's always available to you and you can make art here. I've never had something like that before. The Women's Mobile Museum has given me tools to navigate the world. This is us making space and taking it. And it's ours, because that's who art is for. Abdullah, nice to meet you. Thank you. Muhammad? It's my dad's name. My dad's also called Muhammad. My mind has been blown by like the response I've been getting, because people really see me. And when I say Black Lives Matter, I mean that they do. I mean that the first time I heard it, was from my own mouth, that I was never welcome here until I let myself in.